Okay, we're gonna try this again. Um, hopefully, this will work this time. So, Brit's just had a few loading video issues, and fingers crossed, we just got her to restart the app, so. Hopefully she'll be able to join us this time. Yeah, yeah, hopefully it works. I haven't, uh, I haven't figured out, or I haven't had any issues with my Instagram lives before, so this is a uh, new territory for me. I'm Brett. <laughs> <clears throat> it's going to be a tough interview if I can't see your face. <laughs> Ah, yes! Yes! <laughs> win a chicken dinner. That's yeah, much I was better. Like, yeah, much better. Nice to see you. Yes, Definitely nice to see you. Definitely better too. than the loading circle. Um, yeah. Okay, I have, I've got a handful of questions for you um, about oh. table tennis, and for you, I've decided that I've I've thrown in some some curveball questions at the end. They're a little bit more fun. Um, <laughs> Simply for the fact that I thought this would be more of a fun interview. Um, as fun mm -hmm. as the guys were that I interviewed already, you're a bit of a different case. Um, I think you have a little bit more personality. So um, oh, we're going we're gonna to put you to the test there. Um, <clears throat> are you ready? I am ready. And are you also nervous? You don't know, yeah, you don't know what I'm going to ask you, which is great. This is no. my, my favorite part of it. Um, okay, no. we're going to start a while ago. Um, so... You became a professional player when you were 12. So you played the Dutch Premier League when you were yeah. 12. You were the youngest player ever. Um, yes, that's true. <laughs> so what, what's the experience like for you? Obviously, it's quite difficult to be that young and to be competing already at the highest league in your country. So you must have been quite yeah. excited. There must have been a lot of pressure as well. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of interesting though <laughs> it was like I don't know I was so focused on sports and I at the moment I felt kind of normal that I'm there but I knew that the, the adult ladies didn't like to play with me like they <laughs> yeah. talk about my look or about my shoes like you know other stuff but I was like okay why are they mean but I didn't care I was there to win so I was really mean when I was young <laughs> and how, <laughs> how okay. was the how was the first season I mean like in terms of competitive level were you were you um, able to compete with most of them? Yeah, to be honest, it's like okay, the the ladies league in Holland's not that yeah that that high level, but okay, to be the youngest at that time, it felt like yeah really interesting. It was really different from the youth players. Like you really had to think, you had to play, and mm -hmm. made this more interesting for me. And to be honest, I also felt more yeah, happier when I beat them than the youth players. I was. Re more things like, ah, this is my level, right. I can beat the team. <laughs> so, yeah, it was most of the time, at this time, it was still nice. Yeah. And, and how long did you play in that league before you moved out of the country? Before you, what was the, where, where, did, you, where did you go first? After, um, after I played a few, okay, I, I played the first season when I was 12 in the ladies league. And then directly with our club, we decided that I go to the men's league as well. So, yeah, All I right. played a lot. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, and in Holland, you have these rules, like, you have to be a champion in your division to go up, and right. I had to play, like, 70%. I had to win. So, I think this, from my age of 13 till the age of 18, I went up all the way, and I think in the last two years, I played the, the highest level in men in Holland for two seasons, and then when I was 19, I went to Germany around that age. I mean... The men must have hated it even more than the women to be losing to yeah. a twelve or thirteen year old girl. That's fantastic. That's, true. That's the kind of <laughs> story. this is why you're on here. These are the kind of stories I want to hear. <clears throat> yes, it was quite interesting as well. And I had really good teammates, but mostly more like for the mental game because what you say, like the men were really mean and they were really, really trying to <laughs> intimidate me. Yes, get in my your teammates were always there to support me and help me and if the if some body was really misbehaving I was like okay if you want to fight yeah, fight me not nice. <laughs> so well, that's, it's quite a, 
kind of that's quite an interesting thing because I know the um in the u s also the women's team in general and on the international level are probably stronger in comparison to the men's team and yeah I found when I came to the u s that a lot of it was different because you go to tournaments where men and women are competing together. Do you think that made a big difference for you? Do you th- I, I mean, I feel like that's something that should be promoted more. And, you know. Yeah, yeah for me, I think it as well. Because um, I learned a lot also from the mentality. Mm. Like, at the table, you can fight. And you can do everything to win almost. And after the match, you're just chill again. Like, it's really separate. And I feel yeah. in women, this is not separate. So that's <laughs> more difficult as well. Yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah, I think you feel, you can feel more the fun in the game. Like, mm. boys play a lot more and entertain more. And this is also what I really love about table tennis. And as a girl in the beginning, you're kind of shy, shy to do stuff, to entertain, to do something with feeling. And this really was like, oh, no, they are doing it. I can do it as well. So it's put mm. me to the step to have more fun in table tennis, to do different st- stuff in table tennis. So I think it's, yeah, it's learned me a lot. So I think it's better to develop this more, yeah. Very good point. Um, in 2010, you won the European Junior Championships. You were the second Dutch player ever to do that. But I read that you were injured for four months before that tournament and you, you weren't playing anything, national or international. So yeah. what, what, what was the injury and how did you bounce back from not competing for four months to win? I mean, yeah. that, that's a pretty big title to win in Europe. <clears throat> yeah, it was, but you have to even look back. When I was like second year cadet, everybody was expect- expecting me to have a medal. I had like three quarter finals and I choked. So no <laughs> medal at all. Yeah, it was really, it was hard. Yeah, it was That's hard. But yeah. Then, yeah, then I got an injury before the European Championships and I was also like, mm, I know I have this, but I really want to play it. So the doctor decided to put this... That oh, thing that yeah yes. thank you this word <laughs> and um during the team event i lost everything it was unbelievable i lost everything even my coach was thinking like okay maybe we have to maybe send her back home have played. yeah oh <laughs> yeah, wow stuff like this really really like and and i was like okay it's already so bad it cannot be worse mm. so the first round i had to play against trotti and i lost against her and the team and it was more like okay revenge if i Win this, I can still go home with a good feeling. Right. So, and I won this match with four three, so it was really close. And then I got this feeling like oh, it's okay now. Yeah, you, you've went, redeemed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I redeemed myself. And after I played amazing, and I, yeah, I I think after that I had to play Rahel from Switzerland. Then um, okay, Sabina Winter she lost. So then I got a Czech player. So that's of course better than her. And I won this one with or three as well. Then in the quarters, I had to play Jana Nuskova. Mm. And this is um, yeah, always the kind of match. But I was having confidence, so I won. And then I had to play against this Magdalena from Poland, and she didn't understand my reverse serve. But this was also okay. And the, <laughs> final, the final were crazy. I had to play against Dori Madras, so we were just like playing like men, like spin on spin, and it was a really good match. Even the last set, it was 3-3, and I was down 5-1. I could still oh, wow. manage to win 12 then. Um, so, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a good story for people to hear because I know I've been to tournaments. A lot of people, if they go to a tournament where there's a team event and a singles event and they play really badly in the singles, they can't break yeah. the pattern and then they play crap. For like, like for me, I remember when I played the New Zealand Open, there were a couple of years where I played so bad in the teams and the singles were worse. <laughs> so you, it's good that you turned it around and... <clears throat> got a very, very good title out of yeah. it. Yeah, I'm also happy. Yeah, yeah, well, you should be. <laughs> um, Thank so you. So talking about the Dutch team, the Netherlands mm-hmm. team, uh, you were part of the team. You won the European Championships the first time that you played in the team. Am I right? Please tell me I'm right. Uh, <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah. In the women's team, you mean, right? Yes. Yeah, and in the beginning, I was not so much. I was there, but... Yeah, not really there. <laughs> yeah, um, but but you've also you won a bronze medal as well as part of that team, and you yeah, later. you know you were there with uh, Li Jia and Li Zhao, 
And I kind of wanted to ask a little bit more about the being part of that team and having two players who are both like the top players in Europe at certain yeah. times in their career. Um, how do you feel like that helped shape your development in your career? Um, that's a good question. I think mostly to have this kind of a good team from a young age, I could already have a good level of matches. Mm. Like, I think it's important to have a lot of experience, especially in matches and especially in good matches. So, yeah, I'm really happy that we had a good team so I can, yeah, could compete with them. And, uh, but to be honest, like in practice or stuff, it was not that close that we were talking and learning right. from each other. That was more like the last two years when Li Jiao became a coach. Then we started to speak really because before she was really close and focusing on the matches. But I still think from the youth to the seniors, if you have good matches, you know which level you have to become, what you have to do to become better. So it's a good way to, yeah, level it's like all the standard, time. like a standard, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this one is a, this, this is a tough question. I always throw in one hard question. Um, okay. This one's about 2014, so you probably know where I'm going with this. Um, Maybe, yeah. Your, your team made the quarterfinal at the World Champs, and you played Japan in Japan. Um, you had to play the opening match, which is a lot of pressure already. Uh, mm -hmm. Zhao was playing amazing. She won two matches. And you had to play the deciding match against Ishikawa, yeah. which went to five and was very close. Um, tell everyone a little bit more about the pressure in that match, but more so how you managed to hold your nerve. I mean, it, it's a huge pressure situation already. And yeah. I feel like you were able to play arguably some of your best table tennis ever. I mean, it was a mm -hmm. ridiculously good match. And you were in a, you know, it was, it was even against Ishikawa, who was yeah. one of the top players in the world. Um, and there was the pressure of a bronze medal on the line. Um, mm -hmm. So how, how did you manage to not feel that, all that pressure? I mean. Oh, I did feel it, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should reword that. Yeah, how, how, how did you manage to, you know, I mean, you held, your, you held your nerve pretty well during that match. Yeah, yeah, I did. It's also mostly already, yeah, already being satisfied. You know, this tournament, I, before that specific match against Japan, before that, I didn't lose any match. Like, mm. how is it even possible? I was also surprised by myself, but I didn't give myself any time to think about it. I, I was really thinking during the tournament, okay, I'm playing really good, but if I started to think about, okay, why am I playing good or how am I playing good, then I would confuse myself or my feeling or <laughs> my energy, something. So I didn't really give myself the time to think about it at the time. Right. And also in Japan, the, the, the tactic was more that Li Jiao wins too and then Li Jiao go to the third place to win this match. Mm. So it was not really even yeah, calculating that I had to win. And for me, when I came into the stadium to play against them, oh, it was such a really nice feeling, so professional, so much people watching. And I was even more angrier to lose the first match than the second one because I didn't really have a chance the first. And this was like, okay, I'm in the quarterfinal. I cannot not yeah. have a chance. So I had to put there something. And this feeling I had also against Ishikawa because I came down to zero. And I was like, yes. okay, I cannot lose this one the same way. I have to put a fight. I have to do something. And this I did well in the end. We came back to 2-2. Two, two. And I think in that set, there was a point at 6-3 or 7-3, something around that, that I had the feeling this should have been my point. And it wasn't my point. And then I lost a little bit my confidence. Mm. Then I started to get the nerves to finish the set or finish the, the match. But for the rest, okay, the nerves were quite okay because I was satisfied. But only in this last set, I was like this. And I think now I manage this better because I have a lot of more experience to play right. quarterfinals, yeah. finals, finals. But at that time, I was still uh, yeah, young. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I actually, I, I'm pretty sure I watched that match live. I wasn't there, but I watched really? it. Yeah, I remember that match really well. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was one really of my biggest matches that also put me more in 
table tennis scene and also more in Holland. Mm. I got after this match, I got so many compliments how I was playing and how everything was. So this also gave me more confidence for the future. Mm. Yeah. Um, this one's okay. This one's interesting. Um, so in terms of European table tennis, you've basically beaten at least once most of the top players in Europe. So like Pota, Samara, Polkanova, all of these players, basically at least once during your career, you've beaten all of them. What, yes. what do you think it's going to take from here <clears throat> for you to start beating more of the top Asian players? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I feel already like what you say, like the, 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 the top Asians, like the A team, it's, it's harder. Like the B mm. and C team, I had some chances. Yes. And also last year, I've beaten some Chinese players that I'm still proud of. But I think if I play against Li Xuan, Ding Ding, the really top, top, I don't think that's possible. I, of course, I hope so, but I don't think, but I feel like the, the other countries like Japan, Korea, tai- Taipei are more beatable. Mm. But um, yes, for sure, I have to be really on top shape. Until now, if I find my rhythm, I can really play against the Asian players. But I think if I want to beat them, I have to be faster. Then I can use and my rhythm and my footwork. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's a minus it's for me against... <laughs> yeah, it's Asia. because also for how to practice, you know, if I practice like for one month in Asia, I feel more confidence. I feel that I'm faster and everything. Mm. And this kind of speech you don't really have in Europe or not all the time. And I know for myself, I cannot live all the time in Asia, in Asia to yeah. play against it. <laughs> so it's a really difficult balance to find, but I try to find my ways to become faster. Yeah. Um, right now, you're ranked 30th in the world which is your highest ranking so far. And at the start of this year, you made the final of the European top 16 and you lost a pretty close match with Solia in the final. Um, How do I word this question? Um, So obviously that for you is a really good start to this year. And you probably felt like you were going to maybe have like a really strong momentum for the beginning of the year. And obviously now um, things have slowed down pretty significantly. Have you been able to do any table training while you've been like in, in the quarantine phase? Like, do you have a table at home or any multi-ball or service practice? Yeah, I have a table at my grandparents. But yeah, in the beginning, I didn't really want to be there because it was my grandparents and I want to protect them. But after a while, it was like, taking too long Mm. and (laughs) uh yeah for sure and also in the beginning i was also like a little bit in a bad mental place because what you were saying like i was playing good i had Mm. really good uh, for holland we had more difficult rules to qualify for olympics and i was really close now and also my club it's uh they um got bankrupt so like Mm. and this happened all in one week so I was like, also like, that's a horrible like, week. <laughs> yeah, that was a really horrible week. <laughs> so, so in the beginning, I was also wasn't motivated as well because when I was playing, I was feeling like, okay, what am I playing for? There are no tournaments. There's no money. Yeah. <laughs> there's no Olympics. So it was really, yeah, it was really hard to recover from that. But um, yeah, and then I decided with my coach, like, okay, let's have a one or two week rest and then try to start over again. Let everything go. Right. Also, my good. I have to accept that I will not be playing so good anymore because the break is too long for that now. Yeah. So yes, now we are yeah not playing so long, but we are playing yet, and uh, we are thinking in Holland that the first of July the halls are going to be open, and then okay. I hope I can arrange some farming again or can do some more stuff. But it's, it's it has been hard, yes. Yeah, and and have you uh, have you managed to sign with another club? Yeah. Uh, yes, I go to Berlin now. Ah, East Side. Yeah, Berlin East Side. So that was a small dream of mine to go play there. Like mm. before, we're like, okay, if you are there, this is the best of the league. And I've been playing a lot of times already in German league. So I was like, oh, this is nice. This is nice. And now when they really ask me, I was, I'm, I'm happy. Yes. So uh, do you, will that league, is that league likely to start in September or? Yeah, I, I didn't hear anything 
I mean, they're kind of they're kind of starting some matches already, which is good for you guys. Yeah, and football, they're playing football already, but then with no spectators. And mm. I'm expecting this. I think the German league will start, but no expect expectators. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, ah, wow. This this could be an interesting question. Um, as a professional table tennis player. What kind of changes would you want to see happen in table tennis in the short term that would have an effect at least on your table tennis career? Because I know like if you, if you talk about like the big, big picture of table tennis, some of the things that people really want for the sport are not likely to happen quickly, like while they're playing. But what yeah. kind of things would you want to see that will actually have a positive impact on you while you're still a professional player? That's an interesting question. Yeah, I'm full of interesting <laughs> questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like if it's table tennis relative questions, I can like whoop, throw something out and now I have to think. What would have been impact directly what would be good on me? Like, I'm not sure if this is the right answer, but okay. Uh, like they were thinking to start this new system, like 2021, yeah. the new rule. The world some table stuff. Has. yeah. Yeah, and one interesting change for me was like that you can write yourself in tournaments uh, without the confirmation from your federation. Mm. Because yeah, sometimes you have problems with yes. your federation <laughs> and they can tell you from, yeah. okay, if you don't do so, we don't put you in tournaments or stuff like that. And I think that's really unfair for players. So maybe it's not specific on me, but I think this is a good rule for the players themselves that they can still have the freedom to play the tournaments if they want to, even though if they mm. have fights or are not good in politics yeah. or something. Well, so I mean, yeah, so the, in, the interesting thing with that is that a lot of table tennis players are funding those tournaments either themselves or through their sponsors. There are not so many yeah. national associations that are actually funding it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with you <laughs> on that front. <clears throat> Um, have you have you had a chance to look over? So, do you know the basic structure of the World Table Tennis, or have you looked at it at all? Um, I have looked at it, but you know, I think it's really difficult difficult to see something in writing and see something in real. Right. Like, yeah, what are they saying? Is it true? Because you can have nice and good plans, but will it work out? And are they true? So, I think some of the stuff are better and some are not, but I still have the feeling I have to see them in real before I can judge if it's good, yes or no. Mm. But I think, of course, uh, I see and hear a lot of players complaining now about the tournaments and how they are arranged and stuff like that. So if they can improve that, that's always good. Yeah, I'm on the Athletes Commission, so I know I know about the all the complaints. Um, okay, yeah. I have a small block of... If you thought these questions on table tennis were interesting, um, these ones should be a little bit more, I guess, bizarre. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, the first question is, I don't know if you've ever watched, uh, like, wrestling or, like, boxing, but in those events, when the players come out to the ring or, like, mm -hmm. or the court, they have an entrance song or a theme music. So my first yeah. question is, if you had to choose what your theme song would be if you were coming out to the court for table tennis, what would it be? Oh my god, I have so much music. I like I know. music so much. <laughs> I know. Not this thing at the moment. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll, I'll be I'll be fair. You can you can pick maybe maybe you can pick three. Let's say you don't maybe have to have the same one for for every event. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's still a tough one though because. I really like the, the dancing music, the vibe. So uh, at the moment, I like Burna Boy a lot. I don't know if you know him, but Burna Boy has some <laughs> good music at the moment. <laughs> so yeah, I would pick one of his songs, doesn't matter which one. And I'm going to say songs or artists you don't know, so that's, that's nice. That's fine. Then Yeah, that's fine. So then I have um, friends Kiwi Juice. He has some really... Um, like songs, not with singing, but more instrumental. And he gives me always a good vibe. So even if it's slow, it will give me some peace before the match. And people, will, if you go into the hall, people will be for sure thinking like, okay, what is this? But for <laughs> me, it will be fine, you know? For me, it will be acceptable. <laughs> and uh, oof, this one I have to choose. Okay, I think it will be one song from Bodhisattva. 
It's more like Afro house. And he always also give me the good vibes. So this this kind of stuff. <laughs> All right. Good answers. Um, Thank you. And, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, good just a, you. yeah, but you gave good reasons. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this one could be fun as well. Um, I know you like dancing. So yes. I have posed the question that if you were going out to a dance party, which two table tennis players would you take with you? Oh, table tennis players. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, this is also a tough question. It just mm. comes down to the reason. You could take somebody because they're good at dancing or you could take someone because you think they're terrible at dancing and you want to see them dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but okay, I really care about dancing. But in the end, I think company, I, I like real company. So I would still choose my real friends. So for sure, one of them is Benedek Ola. Even though he don't like to go out with me because... He's a terrible dancer, and I always <laughs> laugh at him. So, yeah, <laughs> he don't like it at the moment. But, yeah, and um, if it's possible with Rahel from uh, Switzerland, she is not really international anymore. She was uh, before. But with her, it's always fun. She has also this, uh, this good energy where you get happy from, and oh. if we are together, we're just giggling all night. So that's fine. Good answers. Um, okay. You can choose now uh, one doubles partner, anyone, anyone from the whole world. You can pick one women's doubles partner and one mixed. Mm -hmm. And basically, let's assume that whoever you choose will say yes, and you can you can choose anybody you want. Yes, thank you. But the men, I'm still uh, status uh, or still it doesn't matter who I can choose from. It's still Benedek Ola. He's uh, still my best friend and. We already played once, and after that we couldn't play because with the federation and stuff, and the Olympics as well, because you had to choose somebody. Mm. And it's still one of my dreams to play with him. He's an incredible player, his thinking is amazing, and I feel I can still learn so much from him, so I will just do please him. Okay. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> tell him. <laughs> and from the woman, oof, this is more difficult. Okay, yeah, I know, but she will be retiring now, so I think that's kind of sad. Like Matilda Eckholm, I would love to play with her, with her feeling and the high balls. For sure, I cannot play them, but it would have been amazing to play with her. Well, maybe maybe she can hold her retirement now. If she watches this, <laughs> she can just go to a <laughs> tournament and play doubles. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but all the time she's playing, of course, with Pote, and I think also they're a really good double. But yeah, I've would also have, yeah played with her in singles, but we didn't play as well. Mm. So I think she should not retire at all. But I can understand the reasons, though. <laughs> I think she's in New York now. I think well, she was in New York. So. I saw her as well. So yeah, we're both if fine. I if I see her, I'll let her know. Maybe we can yeah. arrange something. <laughs> you can play doubles at least one time. <laughs> at least one time. Yes. Yeah. Um, this one's uh, okay. Uh, so for this one, you have to choose a table tennis player that you don't know very well. Um, and the question is, if you could pick one table tennis player to spend a day with, who would it be? So is there any table tennis player that you haven't had a chance to get to know well that you feel... You know how there are table tennis players that you look at them and they're very focused on the table and you mm -hmm. just feel like they would be quite an interesting person, but you don't really know them? Yeah, I think it's also one of my same questions again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, again, Matilda Ekholm, because um, we have a friend together, and she always tells me, like, um, how amazing Matilda is, how nice she is, how interesting she is. And what you say, like, during the tournament, she's really tough and looking serious. Yeah. I have, I've never really had the guts to, to go to her and let's chat because also partly I think that that's her way to focus on tournaments and I don't want to disturb her. Right. Yeah. And I would love to have a cup of coffee with her as well. Yeah. Okay. So coffee and doubles with Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like a perfect day, no? Yeah. Yeah. You could make a whole day of it. Um, and yeah. the last one that I have, if I said that you can pack your bags right now and go on vacation anywhere in the world, Mm. Where where would you go? Yeah, easy one, Thailand. <laughs> really? Really? My, Have you my been there before? Uh, yeah, it was many times. But it's more like my, 
my father is there at the moment when the corona crisis um, break out. He has a house there, so he went there directly. And I miss him a lot. So I will directly go to Thailand to see him again. That's a good answer. Um, right now is a good chance if anybody else has any questions, they can throw them in. And if they're not going to give me any questions, I'm going to pin a comment here. Submit your questions. <laughs> I see Brit, hi Brit, all the time. <laughs> yeah, everyone's saying hello. I want questions. Um, <laughs> And then while we're waiting, I'll try and think of some more um, <clears throat> more things to talk about, if I For can. For sure. Um, okay. Well, while we're waiting, um, do you want to talk a little bit more about, obviously, Rio, you played the Olympics for the first time? Yeah. Um, so what was that like? And also, wh I, don't, I don't know where you're at now with Olympic qualification for... I guess 2021. I don't you don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, the good thing is you don't have to answer that because other people oh, have okay. other people have questions. So someone's asked what your favorite country to play in is. Oh, my favorite country to play in is. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a difficult one for a tournament for sure. One in Asia because they're always well organized, like a lot of spectators to come. Mm. So I think I'm gonna use choose Japan. I had really the, the best feeling there. So the, the favorite country to play in is Japan. Yeah. Uh, your best career win and most meaningful title? Uh, title. Okay, title. Ooh. Then, because if you would say medal, it would be like the last top 16. This would be a nice one. And then title, it would be like the, the from the youth to the 2010 because nobody expected it. Also not me. So that mm. would, uh, that's a nice one. And my best career win, which one? Um, mm, that's a difficult one. Which one was nice? <laughs> there are so, I had a few. Um, I think this the when I, the the first time I beat Samara. It was also kind of unexpected because I was too young and I could be, beat her at the moment. And I was feeling like, okay, if I yeah, can beat her, I can beat others. Yeah. So that was a really good win. <laughs> Um, okay, somebody, somebody's asked, somebody wants to know when you're going to be in the top 10. She's working on it. It's a work in progress. I'm working on it. Um, yeah. what sports do you like besides table tennis and what do you want to learn? I guess that you can include dancing. That's a sport. <laughs> yeah, that's a sport as well. And, um, if else I like to play pool, that's a sport, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yes, I like that as well. And uh, the other one was like, and what do you want to learn? Um, I would like to learn tennis. I think it's close to table tennis, but I don't feel that at all. I feel really bad at tennis, and I think it would be I nice to, to tennis. learn that. I suck at tennis. Yeah, me too. <laughs> do you play? Do you play much tennis at all, like socially, or not that much? Um, it's no, I don't play so much i just started to play a little bit because we have time now and yeah. in holland we can force what's outside not outside. inside yeah same here yeah but before i was really afraid to try other sports or to and also i was not good in playing games i always wanted to win and i also had this feeling with tennis if i'm really bad at it i could not just not go to it. it you know yeah yeah, it was too hurtful. <laughs> and now I feel more like, okay, if I enjoy it, just do it and just try to forget the result and have fun. Mm. Good point. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Now you can answer the question about the Olympics. So at least for, oh. um, obviously, you know, going to the Olympics is, is the top for any yeah. table tennis player and the top for sport. Um, so how, how was it for you when you finally got to go in Rio? It was not a good experience. <laughs> Really? Good. Yeah, I'm glad. Really? I like controversy. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me more. Yeah. You know, like, um, um, I had to be go in the Dutch team. I had to become better than the number fourth. And quite fast, I became better than her. And to go to the Olympics, it was really like, okay, Brit, you have to do this, you have to do that. If not, you're not going, or you have to be part of the team, so you must right. do that. So I was really, like, really feeling like I had to do a lot of stuff and not, not even have to choice to it. 
So if the team went to one month to China, I had to go one month to China. If they tell me I had to practice three times, three times a day, I had to practice three times a day. So the road to it was already very tough and I'm really sensitive to injury, mm. but it was never good enough. From And then it was not for myself, but more the people around, you know, from my teammates, the coach, federation, they were really pushing, 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 and this was really too much for me. And then um, during the events, I was really like, okay, I want to enjoy the event. I want to see other sports, other stuff. But we first had to play or match after seven days, I think. And then I was thinking, okay, afterwards, I will do other stuff. And also during the event, Li Zhao got injured. So during the tournaments, we had to play against Switzerland and we lost. I also play against Liu Jia. I came 2-0 down. I fight back to 2-2 with a crazy tactic, only long serve, nothing else. <laughs> long serve, it worked. So, And then I really I lost with a net and an edge, 12-10 in the fifth, so this was really shit. And then from our federation, we were hearing that the sporters who didn't have a medal had to go home. So oh, afterwards, wow. we stayed two days. And then my family was still there and I had to go home already and I couldn't enjoy the other sports, the Olympic experience. So I was there losing and I had to go back home. So this was my uh, Olympic experience. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of, yeah, well, I appreciate your honesty. I'm glad. It's, it's, it's nice to at least have someone be honest. I feel like that's, you know, in table tennis, yeah. in table tennis most of the people you talk to are quite positive. And obviously, like, you're, I'm not saying you're not a positive person, um, because you are, but people tend not to talk about so much in detail about how they feel negatively about things. And I've yeah. never, ever heard anybody say anything bad about an Olympic experience. So, oh, really? um, yeah. But for me, it was, really, is... it was really an eye-opener, you know, because everybody's saying you have to work hard for this Olympics, and then if you are there, you get this satisfaction, uh, mm. satisfaction. Yeah? Yeah. So, this, yeah. so, and I didn't have that. So I was like, okay, I'm suffering, suffering so much for what? So then after the Olympics, I really changed my way of being a professional athlete, like to enjoy the road much more and mm. do stuff I'm willing to do or wanting to do. And I feel like if I do it this way, maybe then I get the, the medal or not. But then still, if I don't get it, I can still be proud on the road I am doing or I'm having and not just be sad again, like, okay, the road was shit and also right. the meadow is not there. <laughs> so then you are does yeah, that, too shit stuff. Too. Does that make you nervous about playing the Olympics again? Or, well, I don't know if um, nervous is the right word. Or I mean, you know, like the, no. the Olympics is supposed to be something that you really look forward to. So Yeah, true. I, I really look forward to it again because I think I can do it much better and the Olympic mm. experience can be much better. But it also took out a little bit of pressure out of it because it, it can also be not that great. Mm. So I feel just if I do my thing, enjoy table tennis and have my results, yes or no, it's still okay to not have the Olympics. And if I have it, it's also good, you know? Yeah. It's more like yeah. a win-win situation I put myself in, or I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I and, guess at least like now your expectations are not as high probably as they were before. So that's probably, yeah, all, it's probably a good thing for you trying to get into another Olympic Games. Yes, of course. I still really want to, to qualify for the Olympics. It's still a big happening and it gives you, gives you also a little bit like a social status if yes. you go yeah, to yeah, the Olympics. Yeah. So, but I don't really try to think about these things because I think it feels more like a distraction and not really gives you the motivation to focus on the right stuff. Mm. So, yeah, it's always difficult to find the balance, but hopefully it works. Um, a couple of people have asked what yeah. what your racket setup is. Um, it's ALC.S, right? Inner Force? Or is it ALS.C? I don't, always <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So, but it's butterfly, of course, in a force, and um, and the rubbers are Digenix zero five. On both sides. Yeah, on both sides. In Holland, we call it Dignix. Yeah. <laughs> like it sounds. Funny. <laughs> yeah, I think most people call it that. Um, somebody yeah, really? asked, which medal do you still want if you can choose one? can choose like oh i would like yeah, to yeah I, one. <laughs> if you're going shopping for shopping for table tennis medals 
No, of course, I would still like to, to, to have a medal on the European Championships. I have it now on the top 16, so it would mm. be nice if I could also bring my kind, that kind of level to that tournament. European Championships gold. Watch this space. Yeah. Um, all right. You guys need to keep putting in questions. You're putting too much pressure on me now. Somebody's asked if you've played on each continent. Have you played in Africa before? No. No. Oh, wait. I have played uh, Bahrain and uh, Qatar. So this is Africa okay, yeah. as well, right? Uh, so, yeah. But I didn't play yeah. Australia uh, Open, so I haven't been there. Bahrain and Qatar is Middle East. That's is that yeah, Asia? So. That's Asia. Oh, I've played Egypt as well. So Egypt is Africa. Sure. Yes. So this okay. is for sure. But I haven't played in Australia, so that's the only part I haven't been. Uh, okay. Well, you know, obviously me being from New Zealand, I'm going to suggest that if you do, you should go to New Zealand and not Australia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, or okay. If you go to, if you go to, one of the things that I always tell people, because obviously New Zealand doesn't have any big tournaments, but the Australia Open's on the World Tour. If you do yeah. go to the Australia Open, you have to also go to New Zealand. Because that's kind of like your big opportunity to, you know, after you win or lose, take a vacation. Yeah. Otherwise, True. I mean, like, nobody, nobody well, goes there. It's hard to just go to New Zealand. I mean, even I hate traveling yeah. there. And I, I live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's nice. All right. Okay. I've got some backup there from one of my old teammates. Fantastic. New Zealand's better nice. than Australia. Yes, it is. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, we've answered all of those questions. The pressure's back on me again. Oh, God. Um, okay. Uh, I'm thinking. Uh, where, whereabouts... Okay, now the Netherlands team. Uh, Jao is retired from playing now, right? Um, or is she still playing? How, how I never the, know what she's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how's the how's the team now? Like you have some younger players coming into the team now. Um, to be honest, it's not sure because um, the team we had now, like Kim, Lija, me, and Zhao, we would have played the World Championships. Mm. So, and this would be in September. But um, and then moved it again. They moved it again. Yes. Yeah. But like uh, Li Jia and Li Jiao, they were saying like, okay, till we go till the Olympics in 2020. And then after they will see if they stay or go away. And I think if they, it depends what they do, what will happen with the team. So. You'll be the, know, you'll be the captain. You'll be the leader. I am already the leader now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's it, it's it's hard to say. I think it would be good to invest in some younger players to have them with you, even though if they don't play, they experience the tournaments, the pressure, how mm. you're feeling, and you get to know them. So if they have to step up to play and right. become teammates, it's easier if they just come young and you don't know each other and they have to play directly. Yeah, I think that yeah. step is harder. So it would be good if they try to invest. But yeah, the money. They always say the money is is. Yeah, yeah. Not, not enough money so to put other players with us already is too much for them, they say. So we will see how it goes. Um, Philip's asking, uh, so who are, your, who are your teammates? Do you know who your teammates are in the Berlin team yet? Um, I think I'm the only foreigner. So we got uh, Shang Shana, mm -hmm. um, Ham, um, then you have um, Goebel, she's a German player. I don't know. She she played in the Bundesliga, but not international anymore. Okay. Uh, Mulbach, same. She played international, but not anymore. And I think one Indian player, and then it's me. But now in the German league, I have the possibility in January to search for new players. So half season, they can um, yeah take other players on or new players on. So... I think it also depends what happens with the corona, how it's going mm. and stuff like that. Maybe it will attract more players, but till now it's this is the team. And will will you will you move there? Will you move to Berlin and train there? Um no, I will not move there. I'm now here happy with my boyfriend. <laughs> fair, <laughs> but, fair, um, point. <laughs> fair point, yeah. But uh I will go there for some um matches of course and then 
you big and you go up and off. But sometimes I practice in Dusseldorf and they yeah. have also a training center there. So I think, you know, if you have uh, one week in between the matches, then I stay there. So normally I try to arrange like some balance between yeah. okay, when I'm staying and practicing and matches, but not full time there. <laughs> Someone's asked who the best player in the family is after you. I know your sister also plays, so that's probably the answer <laughs> yeah. to that question. But my father also played, so it has to be between them, you know. They maybe they have to play a match now. I can ask them. <laughs> Oof. Between my father and my little sister is a tough one though, because he's a defender. She's playing with long pimps. Oh. So <laughs> I don't know to be that's honest. A tie. You're gonna get it's you're gonna get in trouble if you choose one. So there has to be a match. I think as well. I think as well. Um, somebody's asked what serve you like the best. Mm, but I think does he mean like from my services or in general? I don't know. I'll let you interpret that how you like. I, I would guess. <laughs> I mean, I would guess it would be one of the ones that you're using. Is there or, um, or is there a serve that you really like that you don't? I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I, I try to, to do this serve, it's like ding, ding, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and I, I have some feeling and some touch, but afterwards it's really hard to move back. <laughs> mm. So, but I really like the feeling and the touch, and I think it really looks awesome. But yeah, I cannot do it, so that's sad. But for my own services, I like the most the reverse service. It's more like if I can really hit it hard and strong, the, the sound from my records feels so nice. And mm. I get really good feeling and then, then it's nice. And that, the, using reverse serve in, in women's table tennis is not that common, right? Do you, do, you find that, do you find that more of the women's players struggle to receive that serve? Because I don't, no. I don't really see that many women players using reverse. I don't know. I think, okay, I've seen a few, but indeed not, not as many as in men. That's true. If you make this, uh, yeah, soft, <laughs> but, uh, I feel like the Asians have this one, you know, and the it's still stuff. the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still, still the same bounce on, or side spin. I just feel like it's, uh, as a person who's serving it, like this one or this one mm. afterwards, it's easier to move because you move into the table and you have the right, uh, directly the right position. Yeah. If you make this one, you move away from the table and you have to go back. So you still lose a few seconds. So I think this is, as a, the, the player doing it, I think that's a little bit easier. Mm. Um, that question from Sophie is for you. I'm going yeah, really really, really to let you answer. You can, you can answer right. directly to her. Go ahead. <laughs> Who is better, your boyfriend or Sophie? So at this point, I still have to say Sophie. Sadly, but I still, um, yeah, it's my fault. I still had to practice more with my boyfriends. I will do that. Is that, is that. is that happening? Are you teaching him how to play? Yes, I am. How's it going? <laughs> um, okay, how he, he's doing, that's good. He's really learning fast and he's really okay. talented. How about you, how about you <laughs> as a coach? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem, you know? <laughs> Yes, I, yeah, I really have to learn what's still acceptable, how you say stuff and how you can teach people to yes. start playing table tennis. You know, I, for you, if I would coach you, you can already play table tennis and I can say to you, ah, oh, if you move this and this better, maybe you can do it better. But now you really have to learn somebody who cannot understand table tennis terms, yeah. who cannot understand table tennis yet, to play table tennis. Yeah. So, and I really feel that part I'm still missing. If you become a coach, you really have to learn this. It's not that a professional player, you know this. You really have to learn how you can learn people with exercises without speaking to teach table tennis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult also. I mean, teaching people that are close to you is, is pretty hard. Uh, you, really you're, not, you're not really allowed to be that bossy. I mean, you can be, but um, yeah, but then, it's, it's yeah. pretty tough. So I'm mean, going good luck. Good luck to you with that challenge. Um, Thank you. Okay. Wally, Wally Green has asked if, uh, <laughs> if you think you can beat his uh, mini paddle. Have you ever played with Wally before? No. no. All right. Well, I mean, okay. If you come, if you come to New York, you can play doubles with Matilda, have coffee with Matilda and then have a mini rack, uh, mini paddle match with, uh, with Wally. Um, somebody, somebody. I don't even know what metal patch of little pedal. I don't know what's that. It's like a, the the small racket. You know the oh, tiny the small rackets. One. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, somebody's asked if you play games like PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox. Yes, I do. Not that much. But I, I have a Nintendo Switch. I think it's really nice and comfortable to travel with and to play with your teammates. Mm. And then it's like the, 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 yeah, the normal games like Mario, Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Kart. Nice. Of course, of course. Super Smash and Bros. <laughs> yeah, also. And sometimes I play uh, with my boyfriend FIFA, like the soccer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of stuff I do. That's good. We used to take the uh, we used to take a PlayStation with us when we were traveling for tournaments, but it's you know good. it's it's it's, nice, it's it's nice, but it's hard to focus on what you're doing. <laughs> um, okay, Alfred's asking your best win and your best close close defeat. So, is there one player that you're really happy with beating? I think we mentioned that one already, maybe. Yeah, but I think. Um, and then one player. That, one, yeah. I can also say you know like uh, the best close defeat like on the Rio the Olympics I was really sad I lost but it was mm. really really close and I was playing good and this was in 2016 and then in the European Championships and team in 2017 I had to play against her again Liu Jam in the quarterfinals on 2-2 and I was this time okay I'm gonna get you I don't know how I'm just gonna get <laughs> you and I won this one with 3-0, and I was really happy because afterwards we got a bronze medal. Mm. So in this, with the same player, I could say close defeat and best win. Ah, good interpretation <laughs> of the question. Um, if anybody else has any questions, now is your time. We probably have like five. We have a little bit of extra time since, uh, since we had some loading issues in the beginning. Um, Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> but extra time is good. Let me see. Yeah, now. Ah, oh, good. Okay, here we go. Oh, 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 we're getting political now. Oh. How do you feel about the pay difference between males and females in sports, and what do you think should be done to change this? Okay, as you see in my face, I don't feel good about it. Because yeah, in yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw your face yeah. change. <laughs> because in table tennis, the gap, and I don't think international, but it's more in uh, clubs, the gap is still quite big. Mm. So, and... Yeah, I feel like, oh, yeah, hmm. like, like, I do a lot for it, and I think a, a lot of other ladies do a lot for it, and if you don't get the same amount of money as men, or even the, like, for example, if I'm 17 year old and some men is 300 year old, it's almost possible yeah. that I have the same yeah. payment, and I think this, this gap is too big. I understand there can be a gap, because if you see, like, the spectators, people often watch more men's sports than women's sports, which is sad, but it's the truth. So I understand that I think this gap is too big in table tennis. So that's a little bit unacceptable. And what do you think to, should be done to change this? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's hard, hard. No, I think, <laughs> yeah, if, if there was an easy solution, I think people would already done I've that. Done it, yeah. I think now, like what, what we said before, like with the new system, they're trying, I think they will try, try now to make events separate. Yeah, separate, like yeah. Men, women separate. yeah. And ugh, I'm curious how that's working. It can be working that more people start to watch women table tennis now, but I don't know if that's true. So we have to see if that's happening. Mm. What do you? Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, do you? How do you feel about that overall? Do you think it's a good thing for those events to be separated into men's and women's, or? I mean, obviously, like, there, like, there are some good things that could come out of it and some things that might not be so good. Um, yeah, I think both. Indeed, yeah. Because, you know what I, I told you before, I like to practice with men. I like to uh, learn from men and their table tennis. And I watch often their matches, like what I can learn from them. So this I cannot do at the tournament anymore because when I lo lose, I always like to go to my friends, like Benedek Ola is a good friend. Yeah. Now I cannot cheer with him because yeah, he's there, yeah. not at the tournament. And I cannot go there to watch his matches or support him. And same from the other matches. I think in men, you have um, yeah, more, I can really learn from them. So that's tough. And in this other view, what we told before, like if it's separate, maybe there will come more spectators or people will watch more. So yeah, we have to see how that goes. But for mm. me personal, it, it, it's for me personal, it's a little bit sad. I will miss my friends. Yeah, so well, I mean like, yeah, it's, it's interesting because you've, Especially since you said now you're you're kind of trying to enjoy the journey more, 
It's it's yeah. a, it's almost like I hadn't actually really thought about it before just now that the fact that once you finish your matches or in between while you're playing, there won't be any like men's players in the hall. There it'll just be only the yeah. women there participating. Um, and then also the same the other way around. When the men are playing, there's going to be no women there. So yeah, I'm now 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 I'm trying to visualize <laughs> it, and I'm thinking, man, like going to those events now is like, hmm, interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. Um, like, nice I perspective. Really, yeah. I, yeah, you have also some groups together, like also men, women together. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's it feels like part of it already, and now it's gonna be separate. So, yeah. yeah. But I think um, I think only the only the top tier, maybe only the finals, and then the highest tier of tournaments will be separate, and then the, yeah, the then the true. lower ones will be uh, together. But then I mean, you know, obviously yeah. for you at this stage in your career, you're going to be playing the top ones. So <laughs> yeah. now you have a choice. Now you have a choice. You can either enjoy the lower ones or go for the prize money. Okay. You can mix. You. you can mix uh, both. You can mix both. Um, yes. But yeah, no, that's very interesting. Um, and Wally nailed that. I think that's a good question to ask. Um, okay, last question. If anybody has a question, uh, blah blah blah. Well, I shouldn't say blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. No problem. Uh, somebody's asking something about football. I'm not entirely sure. How do you motivate a person to play table tennis? I think, I mean, that's a, mm, that's a tough question. Everybody's different. That's, you motivate people in different ways. But Everyone. I think like in, in Holland, it's an easy question because at the moment, the, they have made the table tennis really pr um, individual. So now it's like you have a coach and you practice together. Yeah. And, if, and I think for youth players, it's very boring because you need people around. You need to socialize. You need to make friends. Mm. So for Holland, it would already be easy to make groups again, have people groups around, have a yeah. good group. Yeah. Then you have to, to socialize, to, to compete. And this, this stuff I really miss now at Holland. So I think that would be a first thing I would change. And then I think if you have a nice surrounding, a lot of people, then people will also go to there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we have it's like the same problem in the U.S., and a lot of it is yeah. just like the the young players are doing one on one with the coach all the time, and the, yeah, for the, the coach is good because you get more paid, but for the, the uh, yeah, it's stuff, not it's, it's not good for the system overall. I, you know, yeah. like we we would have players that were maybe they've been playing with a coach for like three years, but then you put them with another player and they can't even play, they can't block, or they can't even play yeah, one rally good. together, and so they get used to yeah. this coach playing like perfect placement, perfect block. Yes. And then once you put them in a group, they're, they're terrible. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I agree with that as well. I think more team events, more, more groups. I would like to see um, more, much more team stuff in table tennis. And, you know, like now that I've been in the U.S. for six years, I think, almost all of the most popular sports here are teams. And all of the yeah. sports that have the most fans are teams. They have, like, team hats, team yeah. shirts. You know, they always get behind their team or their, um, you know, the, the, like their city or their state. I think that's kind of missing in table tennis. Yeah. I think for me as well, because if you travel a lot and I'm really a social person, I get uh, a lot of loneliness, you know, and if you play more in teams, you have teammates. Yeah. I think it's easier to, yeah, to compete that kind of feeling. Yeah. So I agree with that as well. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to think of any more questions, and I think... No, there are still some questions in... <laughs> uh, Wally wants you to say hello to Danny Heister for him the next time you see him. <laughs> He's in Germany, so stop, but I will try. <laughs> Somebody wants to know where they can buy all of the clothes that you wear. But it depends. She, she means this now, what I'm wearing? I don't or... know. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, if it's if it's this, it's butterfly. So go on the butterfly page and Instagram or the website, and they have all this stuff I am wearing now. <laughs> all right, there's one more question, uh, and it's when, when when do you think ITTF events will start again? Good luck. <laughs> good luck. That's, that's a good question. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I I hope the World Cup is still going on. It's not too many too many people going there. And I think if you don't do spectators, maybe it's possible. Yeah. 
but oh, we have that's in October. we have twenty seconds left. So um, yeah, I'm going to quickly so, say thanks fun. to you, um, and it's been a lot of fun. And hopefully yes, we can do it again sometime. And next time I see Matilda, I'm going to show her, and <laughs> we can sort it out. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, Brett. See you later. Thank you. Bye bye.